Hey everyone, so welcome to the first recording in what I call this uh, the plug and chug series. And w what I'm going to do for this series then is that unlike, you know, the lectures or the recitations I'm going to do, here we're just going to simply just do problems and I'm going to tell you guys how to do problems. So the uh, first first thing we're going to look at for this first video then is that we're going to look at chapter 2 problems. And we're going to start off with systems of equations. So specifically, we're going to be looking at 2.5, uh, section 2.5, number 26, and so which has this pro uh, following problem. Determine all values of the constants a and b for which the following system has no solution, an infinite number of solutions, and a unique solution. And so here's your system of equations. We're going to make one quick change here. Instead of this being um, a plus x3, we're going to make this a minus 2 x3 and the reason I'm going to do this is because it's just going to make the calculations a bit easier to uh, to work with. So let's move over then and let's do this problem. So what we're trying to do then is we want to find the values of a and b such that we have no solution b an infinite number of solutions and C, a unique solution. Okay, and if you want to follow along again in your book, this is 2526 modified. Okay, and so what number, uh, what do we have then? Well, then let's set up our augmented matrix, which then we put in our coefficients here on the left, and so we have one, one, negative two. Remember, I'm changing this first row, right? This is one, one, negative two, instead of one, 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 I'm changing this, and then we have three, five, negative four, and two, three, negative a. Okay, and then on the right hand side of our augmented matrix, we have four, sixteen, and b. All right, so what do we want to do then? Well, in order to solve part a, part b, and part c, let's just reduce this into row echelon form. Okay, and remember what row echelon form is it's when we have just ones. <laughs> At leading ones, all right. And, and if you don't know what row echelon form is, again, I'm not going to spend too much time explaining the theory. We're just going to do problems here. And so, if we reduce this to row echelon form, what am I going to do? I'm going to do uh, this row right here, the second row minus three times the first row, so I get zero, two, two, and then of course one, one, negative two on top, and then I'm going to do the third row minus two times the first row. And so that's going to get me 0, 1, and then 4 minus a. Okay, And that's because I get negative a minus a negative 4, which is positive 4, so we get 4 minus a. And then on the right-hand side, we get 16 minus 3 times 4. So 16 minus 12 is 4. And then on the bottom, we get b minus 2 times 4 is 8, so b minus 8. And then here's 4. Okay, And then we reduce it again. And what do we get? Now we get uh, 1, 1, negative 2. Okay. And then I'm going to divide now, divide the second row by a scalar. So divide it by 2. I get 0, 1, 1. And that's still 4. This is a 2 now. And then the bottom row, uh, we're going to do then this row minus this row up here. So that's going to get me. Actually, we're going to do this row, right? We're going, to do, we're going to take this third row and we're going to subtract out that row, which you're allowed to do, okay? Because it's the same thing as both subtracting out one half times row two. And so then now we get zero, zero, three minus a, and then you get b minus eight minus a two, so b minus 10. Okay, and so more or less this is in row echelon form. It doesn't have to be perfectly, as long as we expose the pivots, right? So here's my pivot. Uh, here's my pivot, here's my pivot, here's my pivot, right? As long as we have our pivots, then we're good. Okay, so where does this go wrong, right? So part A, then how can we have no solution? Whoops. And so the way we can have no solution then is if this value here is zero, but this value is not zero, right? Because in that case, I get zero, 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 get zero, 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 and then something that's not zero, 
but then that tells me that x3 times something has to be not 0, but x3 is being multiplied by 0, which is impossible. So the solution to a then has to be that if a equals 3, because then we get 0, and b is not equal to 10. Okay, and if that's the case, then we have an infinite. Uh, we have no solution because the last row doesn't work. Another way you can see that is then, if this guy was zero and this guy was not zero, then uh, rank A would be not equal to rank A augmented, which in indicates that there's no solution, right? Part B then, how can there be an infinite number of solutions? Well, that means we need we need uh, a free variable, okay? And how do we get a free variable? Well, we can get a free variable if this last row here is essentially just zero, right? And the reason that gets us a free variable is because I'll be multiplying by, right, x1, x2, x3. If this last row is zero, there's no pivot, so that means that x3 then can take on any value it essentially wants. And then we have to calculate x1, x2 based on what x3 is. So in this case, then, uh, I need a equal to 3 and b equal to 10, because then that zero is out this last row. All right, and then finally for c, how do we get a unique solution? Well, we get a unique solution if there's a pivot for every variable, OK? So that means this guy right here can't be 0. And it doesn't matter what b then is, because as long as there is a pivot here, then it will automatically be forced into the value b minus 10 over 3 minus a is equal to x3. So uh, in order for 3 minus a not be 0, then if a is not equal to 3, then oops, <laughs> if a is not equal to 3, then you get your unique solution up here. Ah. Okay, cool. So so that's that's how you do these kinds of problems with systems and equations where you need to find an infinite no, so number of solutions, no solution or just a simple unique solution. And uh, we're, we'll do another problem with another problem about systems and equations, slightly different but more or less in the same category.